Transition Awareness Breathing. Feeling grounded for both children and parents is essential for healthy living and learning. Join Eartha Powell on this series for tips and tools for creating a harmonious environment for learning. Transition Awareness Breathing will help you and your child find an individualized path to tackle change, promote lifelong learning, and discover new approaches to calmness. Welcome back to Transition Awareness Breathing Podcast. It's me, Eartha, and welcome back to part four in our series about how a charter school is preparing their children for a future futuristic um, future in a digital world. And we're finding a lot, at least I'm learning a lot, and I can really see how um, nationally this school is ranking very high. It makes a lot of sense. So I invite you to you know, get a, a comfortable position and enjoy this panel discussion. Um, shout out, thank you so much again, Mrs. Cohen, Mrs. Uh, Jawanda, Mrs. Smith. You guys are awesome, you're the champion team. And um, I just wanna add, to this, uh, this brief introduction that it's important to be involved as a parent with your children's um, school, no matter what school they go to. And it's not helicoptering. I think that helicoptering um, term, I, I, to me, I think it invites parents to stay away from the school. And I don't think that is constructive. Um, I, I think as a parent, if you're approaching your child's education as a partner or with the educational system, and that way, because you know all children have different needs. And uh, I think the best way for a school to understand your child's needs is to be involved in your child's school. Again, if that is a negative experience for you, there's many different schools, but let's think about our future, our children, because how we respond is how that child's gonna respond in the future with their children. And so I'd just like to give you that food for thought and thank you so much for joining me in Transition Awareness Breathing. Let's get started. ECLA has been ranked like an A. These are the champions. Hi, my name is Tracy Smith, and I'm currently the vice principal for Kinder through Second in Paradise. Okay. I am Catherine Cohen, and I'm the principal of ECLA, and I supervise a cohort of third through fifth grade on a little more regular basis. Hi, I'm Simran Jawanda, and I'm vice principal of middle school. So, great. But there are ways that you can react respond to somebody and then how you choose to react to it. So um, I don't know if that kind of answers your question around mm -hmm. bullying and unkindness. Okay. So I think it does because um, in, in the mindfulness cur curriculum, especially for teens um, is, is the, the thought that, that I'm okay. And um and that what people say about me is not true. And to believe that I, I do have talents and I do have, I do have um, gifts and I don't have to like everybody. That's okay. You know, and it seems like in the mindfulness and in, in the, the, the um, courses that I've completed um, to help to, it's like you're giving a, a child, a team for, for particularly teens, um, the permission to say, you don't have to like that person. It's okay if you're not in their group. You know what? 
there's other good people and, and maybe reflect, why are you wanting to be in that group? Because <laughs> maybe you're setting yourself up, not for bullying, but for trying to be accepted into something that's not you. That's that self-reflection right. thing, you know, and, and even with the little, the little ones, you know, I don't get into it like really deeply because it, it's, it's not going to, but you know, it's okay. You can sit in another group, you know, and that's, and as you were saying, it's not really bullying. I think it's exploring acceptance and non-acceptance. And one thing I like about mindfulness is that it doesn't color coat anything. It doesn't paint rose colored glasses. You know, we're not going in and sitting with our hands together and singing some kind of mantra, mm -hmm. but we're dealing with real life issues and, um, and, and, and in hopes that it supports your, your core values, you know, but when, um, if someone is not kind and it does hurt that you need to tell somebody, you know, because sometimes emotions can get so full that a lot of times children, they don't know what to say. And, and I don't know if when they go home and they share it with their families, if they're just being told, you know, bull, you know, toughen up, bully up, you know, just go back and suck them in the eye or, you know, some kind of craziness like that, which is not the solution. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So I, I, you know, I just wanted to share and I hope that we're complimenting each other at that. Yeah. I think we do that a lot here in terms of our discussions with students, whenever there are issues, I mean, we, we talk to both parties. Sometimes we bring them in together. There's a lot of mediation, but there is a lot of discussion of we're not asking everyone to be friends. We're asking everyone to be kind and polite to one another while you're here. You're respectful to each other while you're here. You're not talking behind each other's backs. You're not trying to create drama in the classroom, but you also don't have to play with each other at recess. You don't have to, you know, <laughs> be best friends and share pencils or, you know, yes. none of those things. You have to be able to say to yourself, this is someone I want to be friends with. And this is someone I don't want to be friends with because it doesn't align with my core values. And so getting them to recognize that and then having a voice. So if someone is mean to them, we ask them, use your voice first with that person mm -hmm. and say, this is not okay with me. You don't mm -hmm. have to be rude. You don't have to come back with mean words. You just have to be firm in your stance of like, I'm not okay with that. And when that doesn't work, you find an adult to help you mediate that situation. So I think it's just kind of the yeah. same thing is, you know, we're not asking everyone to be <laughs> friends with everyone. There's yeah. no way that that's possible. But again, learning how to navigate who you want to be friends with, who you don't want to be friends with, who are your people, who are not your people, and that there there shouldn't be, I, I have to be friends with this group because I because they're the popular group or, mm. you know, that's not happening. It's That's not who you are. Mm. That's not where you want to be. And all those things that they're doing don't align with and don't make you comfortable. <laughs> then you need to find new friends and find places where you're feeling better about yourself. That's almost like the first line of conflict management is is facing the, the individual. And that's so hard for many, many people, grownups. Right. You know, nursing. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I reflect to my own profession. Um, us nurses are terrible, you know, because we have different styles. Oh, your daughter is a nursing, but she will. She is headed that direction. Yes. She <laughs> will know, you know, is um, if the best thing, however, however hard it is, is that first line of conflict management is letting the person know. I was just going to say that I feel like over the years, the more and more, and it's happening younger and younger, as students are getting involved in social media, uh, the, the reigning trend in society is how many likes do you get? Uh, how many people like what you're doing? How many people like what you're not doing? Mm -hmm. What you're saying about others? And so I think that transfers over into their skill sets in <sighs> friendship groups. Wow, and that validation. Is, it's absolutely. That I think is, that's how they wow, feel validated. That, to me, that's and a, so wow. it's a huge, mm -hmm. it's a huge battle. <laughs> and I know that there's families that will push off their kids to have social media as long as they can. And they don't like it. The kids don't like it. And, but the, I feel like the ones that help their kids have limits on it and not mm -hmm. be on it as much or wait a little bit longer. I feel like they're helping them build the skill set that we were mm -hmm. talking about because it's, it's hard. It's very hard. Wow. And I feel like they're challenged way more. I think about back when we were in school, you know, 
uh, our groups of friends and you know the likes that is the groups that we all in you didn't yeah we knew that the other people didn't like us or other you know we had different likes and dislikes mm-hmm. but i didn't i don't feel it was like the intensity of what it is now so i also think the intensity of it is because when we went to school um you know, three thirty, we went home and we had no contact with anybody at that True. point. So we, it wasn't an all day thing. But these guys go like home and they have the group chats and they're constantly mm-hmm. in each other's faces about things. And they get on these group chats and all of a sudden they're behind a screen and they have the audacity to say so many things that they wouldn't say to anyone in front of their face. And so, you know, but then they're, you've also got these students who have come in here and said they said this about me in this group chat and and then they tell us that they haven't exited out of the group chat and you know that's the question we always have is like if you're not comfortable with what's going on in a conversation why are you not pulling yourself up yeah and so also giving them the skills of like if you don't like something being comfortable and giving yourself permission yes to Mm -hmm. exit that situation to get out of that situation so that you can feel safe and you can you know all those skills are very important right now because i feel like you know the older generation called it people pleasing, but this younger generation, they're just pleasing each other by being involved mm. in things that they're not comfortable with. Well, they're people pleasing because it seems like it seems it seems to me like less and less children are raised with the understanding of some good boundaries. You know? Mm-hmm. Parental yes. boundaries around parenting, maybe, I'm not sure, but definitely kids coming in not really understanding how to set good boundaries for themselves. Um the other part that, you know, I personally seem to feel like I see more is for the last five or six years, we seem to really be living in a society where um, what is valued and what is, um, you know, liked is being hard or crass or mm-hmm. um, aggressive, Others. kind of in your face. Mm. And a lot of like yes. burns, kids, you know, ooh, and they're trying to... Mm demonstrate a friendship um with kind of meanness yeah. and um mm-hmm. i don't know that they mean to be mean i think they are trying on they see what's you know, modeled they right? see what's modeled i you know and so they're trying to be the class clown or they're trying to be something but on top of that um they're just much more uh yeah i don't know mean is the only word i can think of it in in their friendship language you know, mm-hmm. I, I we just didn't grow up in a space where you hit your friend. You're like, shut up. You're stupid. Yeah. And you're laughing and you're joking. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and then, you know, it's funny till it's not funny. Mm-hmm. And, and they have a lot of blurriness around. Mm-hmm. I can accept that from this person, but I won't accept that mm-hmm. from this person. And, um, just the idea, you know, we talk, counsel a lot of kids in, um, why did you start making jokes about each other's mothers or making jokes <laughs> about some, you know, why aren't you, let's talk about movies that we've seen. Let's talk about books that we read. Let's mm-hmm. talk about video games we like to play, mm-hmm. but it doesn't seem like they, they are trying to, a, a good majority of them are, but it doesn't seem like some of the kids that are here are trying to build friendships on real grounded pieces of commonality. It seems like they're trying to figure out how to build friendships on, kind of teasing, you know, class clown, um, a little more aggressive. And that all stems from social media. Right. What's, mm-hmm. what's cool on YouTube. Right? So I'm going to raise my hand <laughs> um, because you touched on it, social media, um, the crassness in social media and the amount of attention that is given to those kind of behaviors. And you have young minds modeling what they what they see, you know, and the amount of likes, the, you know, that, that behavior is attracting. And, you know, for youngsters, you know, wanting to be like this as part of the developmental process, but, you know, and I don't, I don't know if, you know, X, you know, used to be Twitter or, or Instagram or, you know, Facebook, you know, okay, this, so, so my podcast is going to go live and, you know, it's okay. I'm going to call you guys out, but you know, um, the influences that is happening with our children is going to be in the future. And, you know, we don't know what product is going to, is going to result in that, um, with the decreased population, 
with increasing digital world, we we have no idea. But I think we have our we have our curricula set out and a lot of hard work to do. Um, you know, because we've talked about a lot here. And I know for my program next year, I think this has made a lot of sparks for me. And um and I thank you I thank you for your time and um just for our closing, what would you like to share with parents or fellow educators or um, other people who may see this podcast? What, what, what would you like to just emphasize um, if you have one thing you wanted to, to make a point of? What would that be? I think for me, it's the reality that individual needs to find value in themselves in order to be open enough to grow, grow in whatever way that is, right? So um, that means academically, and it means socially, and it means, you know, behaviorally. And as individual parents, we all want that for our own children. And so I think being a parent, reflecting on how am I helping my child trust the world and trust that the world is here and loves them and, and, and is inviting them in to then grow and be a part of that world. Um, and then trusting the adults that you put in charge of your children, that they're doing the right by them as well. That would be my thing as a mom and an educator. I'd say I'm going to go back to something that Ms. Cohen talked about earlier with serving others. I feel like as parent and as educators, opportunities to show kids how to serve each other, doing something, even opening a door for someone, picking up something for someone when they've dropped it, or just not always thinking about self and making sure that you're thinking about others around you, because that's going to go with you throughout your life. And hopefully we can do something. about. That. Um, I think I would, and reflecting on myself as a mother too, and as an educator, but um, you know, just talking about all this made me stop and think about the digital age and how it's actually influencing the adults. And we're not really paying attention to the kids. And I, you know, I'm guilty of it myself. You know, my daughters will be like, mom, you're on your iPhone and we're trying to have a conversation, you know, um, I think my going forward would just be let's pay attention to the kids and paying attention to the kids means putting away our digital devices mm -hmm. and putting away our stuff and paying attention to what are they doing and who are they talking to and what is going on, you know, in school and out of school and just paying more attention to the kids because you're right. They, this is our future. And if we're trying to see what product this is going to be in the future, it's, I mean, after all the things we've discussed, it's a little, it's a little scary. So I think we should just kind of all stop and start paying attention to what's kind of going on. For your time and thank you for allowing me to to um, include you in this podcast world <laughs> I, I hope that maybe we could do a follow-up maybe uh, absolutely sometime maybe next year in the fall or in the or you know the winter months things like that um, I'm certainly um, going to look at my curriculum that you know and how I uh, broadcast things maybe include different things that that could help um, encourage people to be kind and share and maybe limit our own time on on our devices and you know just kind of things to think about and I, I hope um, for my listeners I hope this has given you some things to think about and um, look forward to talking to you again next time bye be sure and pick up a copy of Tab Mindfulness, Awareness and Coloring Activities in a Pandemic World. It's not just an ordinary coloring book. It features 23 illustrations to stimulate thought, relaxation, and creativity for anyone between the ages of 4 and 94. 
increase your positive self-talk energy, unlock new creative paths, transform your time once or twice a week to create beautiful art while strengthening confidence, building positive self-talk, and sensitize self-awareness. Tab Mindfulness, awareness and coloring activities in a pandemic world. It's available now at Amazon.com.